Hello there, I'm Tom Hoskins. Uh, I'm the editor for Mining Journal, and I'm here with Stephen Turner, who's managing director of Rafaela Resources, which is a junior exploration development company building a portfolio in critical minerals, both on the exploration and development side. Um, so in August 2019, Rafaela acquired its Santa Cumba project in Northwest Spain, which was a transformational deal for the company. Um, Stephen, can you talk to me a little bit about what you've been up to since then? Uh, certainly, thanks um, uh, for that introduction. Uh, yes, the acquisition of Santa Cumba was uh, transformational for us, and the focus of the company very much shifted to uh, the development of this, uh, of this project. Uh, we are fast-tracking it through to uh, production. Uh, the initial activities that we needed to undertake was a drilling program. We, we took on a, an inferred resource, and it was very clear uh, at the time that we needed to better define that resource uh, in terms of the near surface mineralization. And that's something we did. We, we immediately launched into a drilling program and we completed that in March of this year uh, with a 9,000 meter drill program, 65 holes, which led to a mineral resource uh, estimate upgrade uh, that we announced in July. So we took a 5 million ton resource and we now have a 10.6 million ton resource 60% uh, of it sits in measured and indicated. And that was critical because we were able to feed that into a mine plan. So the other piece of activity or the, the other uh, focus of, of our attention has been on the putting together of a feasibility study. Uh, the mineral resource estimate was key to that, but we also in parallel uh, focused on uh, the process, the metallurgical test work or sorting test work. And we conducted that in parallel while we're doing the drilling program. And that all came to a conclusion yeah, early this month on the 2nd of December, when we released our pre-feasibility study, which showed extremely strong economics for this project. And, and look, we've been delighted with the, uh, the feedback we've had on that. Uh, the, uh, the project demonstrates a, a very robust uh, operating margin of about 40%. Uh, we've got a, um, a five-year mine life at 1.3 million tons per annum. Uh, we've got uh, extremely strong IRRs of uh, you know 120% post-tax. That's based on a realistic uh, forward pricing forecast for, the, for our commodity tungsten. So extremely excited about that. I think the um, uh, one comment I would add uh, is that we've always recognized it's a fairly modest size project to start with. Uh, that was always the intention in terms of fast tracking was to not spend uh, a year, two years doing a drilling program to build up a very large resource to then lead on to a feasibility study. What we wanted to do was uh, develop a project that could demonstrate strong economic uh, metrics and then go back in and, and expand and, and improve upon that. And that's what we're looking to do. So, uh, so a very busy time for us uh, over this last um, period since we made the acquisition. And the other uh, key changes that we've made since we took on Santa Comba is refocused our portfolio as well. So we, we exited Sandstone, which is a gold exploration play. We sold that into Westar Resources, which is just now going, uh, will be listed on the stock exchange uh, this week. Uh, so we've been very fortunate where we remain a shareholder in that and have benefited from the, uh, from the excitement around gold. Uh, and the other thing we've done is at the end of November, we completed the acquisition of a high grade sulfide nickel copper platinum group element uh, project in Northern Quebec. So now the portfolio consists of a development project in Spain, uh, which we're fast tracking for first production targeted for the end of next year. And then we've got some very, very exciting exploration in Canada. We've got our asset in Yukon that we had from the outset, which is copper, uh, cobalt and silver. And then we have uh, our new nickel, copper, platinum group element project in Northern Quebec. So some really exciting upside uh, to come. Okay. And so, so what are your key um, milestones and um, things that you're looking to achieve over the next, next quarter? Yeah, so, um, so we've put a lot behind us. We've, uh, we've significantly de-risked Santa Cumba. Uh, but what we need to do now, and we recognize this, we've recognized from the outset, is we need to increase the scale of this project uh, a little bit further. So uh, in early next year, we plan a drilling program. Uh, that program is very much targeted on adding to the mine plan. So we're not looking, it's not an exploration program. It's really an infill or step out program. Uh, particularly the south of the deposit, which is within the pit limits, 
uh, that uh, we've already seen and identified uh, very good mineralization. So we'll get in there uh, in January, we'll start uh, the drilling program and that will add very, very quickly to this project. We'll be able to slot it in and be immediately accretive uh, to the project. So that's one activity that's important. Uh, the other one is we're gonna continue with our metallurgical test work. So our previous work has given us the uh, basis of a process flow sheet, which we're very comfortable with. It delivers a 70% recovery. Uh, but what we believe is we can push that higher. Uh, we can push it higher uh, through better recovery of the fines. It's something that uh, in tungsten is, tungsten is a wolframite, it's a very malleable um, mineral. Uh, it, it very quickly can uh, turn to fines or slime if you're not careful. It's a common issue in tungsten and tin we see around the world. We've taken the lessons from other projects and we are now putting together an eight uh, ton bulk sample that's going through to our uh, test lab in, in the UK through Grinding Solutions, uh, and we'll be focusing very much on boosting that recovery. And interestingly, if you look at the uh, PFS, the 1% uh, uh, increase in recovery against our fairly modest reserve base at the moment leads to a 1 million US dollar increase in MPV post-tax. So if we spend $100,000 on this MET test work, we'll get, uh, with a 1% increase, we'll get 10 times our return on on, on uh, investment straight off the bat. So. Uh, that's a, that's a critical item that we're going to do over the next um, uh, eight to 10 weeks as well. And the other thing that we'll be doing, which also is near term and exciting, is we will be flying a low frequency heli EM survey over our new acquisition Midram and LaForce in Quebec. This is important because the previous work done on these um, claims has been always uh, First of all, there was a, a VTEM flown in the past. It was high frequency and only picked up shallow anomalies. The drilling to date has been always less than 200 meters, even though there's about 45,000 meters of drilling. So it's always been twinning validation of previous holes. This is an exciting deposit. It's a high grade. We see uh, intercepts of over 5% copper, over 5% nickel in this sulfide deposit. So extremely exciting. But what nobody's done to date is look for the feeder system. And we believe that there should be a source uh, deeper than these uh, high, high grade pods that we've seen. And that's what we're gonna be targeting with this low frequency heli EM. We're gonna be looking to fly both claims in uh, late uh, January, early February, uh, process that and hopefully come out with some very exciting drill targets that we can, uh, that we can advance uh, beyond that. So some, some real strong catalysts for the company going forward, really in the first quarter of next year. Okay, great. Thanks, Stephen. Um, you mentioned before your uh, acquisition or your entry into, into nickel, which which um, I'm sure a lot of our readers will have heard a lot about nickel and excitement around EVs and uh, growing demand and a lot of people tipping it to be the hot metal for 2021. But tungsten, um, uh, uh, maybe maybe less, uh, our readers might be less familiar with. Can you talk a little bit about, about the market um, and uh, yeah, your, your take on, on, on that side of things? Yes, as a company, we, we're very interested in looking at uh, commodities in industries and areas that we see have a, a, a very uh, bright future. Uh, tungsten is one of those. Uh, nickel's been identified early on because of its uh, key role in, in the EV industry, as you mentioned. But uh, let me just tackle tungsten for a moment. Uh, tungsten is controlled uh, by the Chinese in the sense they supply 80% of the world's supply. Uh, they uh, consume about 55%. And, you know, they've been closing down mines uh, in China uh, to bring that back into balance. They're very open about the fact that they're not keen on supplying tungsten out into the global markets. Tungsten is a critical metal. It is used in some uh, strategic applications from the manufacturing of uh, automobile engines and aircraft engines uh, through to the metals and mining industry and, and oil and gas, where it's used in drilling, and also in the military. So it's got uh, it's a metal that has the attention right up through into government, and and yet there are very few sources in the West for tungsten, uh, and that's what makes the mine in Santa Cumba particularly compelling. We're 60 kilometers from a a deep water port, very well placed to service Europe, which only produces about half of its demand, and also North America, which has effectively no production whatsoever of tungsten. So we're right on the edge of two major econ uh, economic regions that simply don't have tungsten and yet need it. So we see it as very positive. Uh, so that's why we've moved into uh, tungsten, but we also like nickel. 
Uh, we like nickel. We like nickel for some time. Uh, no different than the market. We see a, a growing application for it, and uh, you know we're very selective. We we're only interested in nickel sulfides. Uh, we are interested only in investing in those jurisdictions which are mining friendly. We're not going to look to try to uh, invest in, in in a difficult environment. It's hard enough to get a mine up and running at the best of times. Uh, so we're very keen on sticking to areas that we know and understand, like Spain, like Canada, uh, and, and potentially Australia as well. So these are the sort of areas we'll stick to. And, and the metals that we're looking at are, are tungsten, uh, nickel, and, and possibly tin as well. So, you know, fairly focused in where we're looking and the jurisdictions we'll operate in. And the change in our portfolio that we've done over the last 12 months reflects that strategy going forward. Okay, fantastic, Stephen. Well, um, I think that's pretty much all we have time for. So um, thanks very much indeed for the update and uh, good luck with everything over the coming months. Thank you. Thank you uh, for your interest and uh, I appreciate the time. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.